Welcome, I'm uh, Jonathan Lionheart. I'm a final stage PhD student at the University of Cambridge in the Faculty of Divinity. Um, I did my dissertation on God's relationship to space in the 17th century in England, specifically. Uh, and even more specifically, uh, in the thinker Henry Moore. Uh, Henry Moore was a Cambridge Platonist, uh, which is a group of Christian philosophers and theologians in Cambridge in the 1700s or 17th century who also were followers of Plato in that they read Plato's dialogues very deeply, really engaged with it, tried to merge their faith and their philosophy that they, they found in Plato. And so that's why they're called the Cambridge Platonists. Um, so Henry Moore was looking around and he looked at space. What is this thing called space that's all around us, that's within us and that we are within? And looking at space, he thought to himself, hmm, space is invisible. You can't see space. You can see the things that are inside of space, but you can't see space itself. It's invisible. Space is also seemingly infinite. If you try to picture a wall at the edge of space, an end to space, as soon as you've pictured a wall, you can sort of imagine yourself extending your hand past the wall or shooting an arrow over the wall. As soon as you try to imagine a wall at the edge of space, you picture what's behind the wall. And so seemingly space would have to be infinite because you'd never be able to bracket it or wall it in because there'd always be space behind the wall uh, as well. So space is invisible and it's also infinite in Henry Moore's thinking. And he kept looking around and he thought to himself, well, space seems to be omnipresent. It's present everywhere. Everywhere I go, space is there. You can't go somewhere without going in the space that constitutes that where. So space, by definition, is everywhere. It's omnipresent. Uh, finally, he also thought to himself that space seems to be able to interact with the material world without actually being made out of the material world. So this wall is composed of matter and atoms and such, so it's material. But space isn't made out of atoms and matter. Space seems to be the absence of matter. Space is the thing that material things are in. So he reasoned to himself, space must be immaterial, non-material, not part of the material world. Hmm. So space is invisible, infinite, omnipresent, and immaterial. And finally, space is able to be present with the material world, because space is everywhere that the matter is. Matter exists in space. So space is present, but it's, it's not one with the material world. And so it can interact and be present here without being reduced to another material thing. And so this allowed space to be transcendent. It transcends the material world, but is also imminent. It's in the material world. It's here. It's both present and not material, which is unique, because anything that we usually encounter in the world that is present is material. This wall is present, but it's material. I am present, but I'm material. The weird thing that, about space that makes it truly unique in the universe is that it's present, but it's not material. So space is invisible, it's infinite, it's omnipresent, it's immaterial, and yet it can still interact and be present with creation. And Henry Moore realized that these are the same attributes I apply to God. God is invisible. God is infinite. God is omnipresent. God is immaterial and yet somehow present all around us. Invisible yet somehow real. And Henry Moore had this weird thought, well, what if God is is space, or at least space is somehow connected to God, or some some sort of extension of God. And this would have just been a weird thought, just sort of a weird, crazy, like, what if God is space kind of moments that would have just been quickly ignored, had this not been picked up and adopted by none other than Isaac Newton. So Isaac Newton, the father of modern physics, the discoverer of gravity's impact, not just on our planet, but on all the planets and how all the heavens go and all of that, adopts Henry Moore's weird view of divine space, which is what he called it, 
Newton believes that space is divine, that space, this inv infinite, invisible, immaterial, omnipresent thing, is God. And so Newton bakes that idea into the rising physics that he creates and births into the scientific revolution and world. And so this little piece of religious eccentricity gets built into the uh, rising sciences. So it becomes very important on a historical level and also a philosophical level. And interestingly enough, some recent authors have actually explored whether divine space could still be true today. There's an author named Robert Oakes who published an article arguing that space, if it was divine, would actually fit with traditional Christianity. Um, now, a lot of people would push back against that, and I'd push back against that. The reason being is that in Christianity, in the Judeo-Christian world, God is transcendent. God is not part of creation. No, God is the creator. God is not in time and space. Rather, God created time and space. God is above and beyond the physical universe. And post-Einstein, we believe that time and space themselves began to exist 14 billion years ago. So how could God be space if space began to exist 14 billion years ago? God has to transcend time and space, da 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 but Robert Oakes uh, has been arguing that if God, um, if God was space, perhaps he exists as a broader space that Einstein's space-time exists within. So Einstein talked about the fabric of space-time, and you've probably seen illustrations of that in random science videos at school, where space-time can be warped and stretched, and the fabric of space-time is like a fabric with a bowling ball that stretches it. Uh, some authors recently have argued that maybe there's a bigger space that space-time itself exists in. So yes, space-time that we think of it began 14 billion years ago, but what is space-time itself exists within? Because if you're describing space-time as a fabric, that's a very material way of describing it. Perhaps space-time exists within a broader space, what they call a metaphysical space. So there's sort of the physicist space but there's even beyond that a divine metaphysical space in which space-time exists. And so some have been arguing that perhaps God could exist beyond and above space-time as this broader space, and that that wouldn't make God somehow created 14 billion years ago when space-time came into being, uh, because God could exist before what we think of as physical space-time expanded into being. Anyways, um, that's kind of one of the, the discussions that's been going on. What is God's relationship to space? Um, is that scientifically reasonable? Is that theologically orthodox within the Christian tradition? Is this something Christians can accept? Some Christians would s try to bring God as close to the world as they can. They want God to be connected to time and space because they want God to be near, to be present, to be down here with us in a relational way, a way that we can almost reach out and touch and know God. Because if God's too far away, if God's too transcendent, if God's too far beyond space and time, how can we know him? How can we have a relationship with him? How can we access and talk about him if he's that transcendent? Um, so some theologians want to make God more in time and space. And divine space is one of the ways that some of them did that in the 17th century. And one or two authors have suggested more recently um, and my dissertation did a chapter or two exploring whether that was plausible. I argue personally that I think God ultimately transcends time and space, but I don't think it's totally ridiculous to ask if he's related to space in some sort of way. I think it's an interesting question, and I think it has some implications about how God is present with us down here in space and time. Um, so it's, it's an interesting discussion. Anyways, that was kind of my introduction to that subject. I hope you're have a good rest of your day. Cheers.